everybody, it's Stephanie. Let's talk stitching. Happy March. Happy spring. Are you glad to have the sunshine again if you're in the United States? <laughs> I am so glad. The vitamin D is doing me some good. Um, how's your stitching going? Mine is going really great. Uh, I'm happy with my progress in the last month. Um, so this video is going to have some shout outs. Uh, some whip progress, I have a couple finishes, I have a rack, and at the very end I have a small floss tube PSA. It's not like dramatic and I'm not gonna cry and talk about how people are being mean to me, so don't like fast forward to then. <laughs> it's no big deal, but it's just something I wanted to bring up and take it or leave it. Uh, hang with me through this video though. Uh, first I'm going to start with my shoutouts. I'm calling this my lust list. <laughs> I'm using the word lust in the most loosely way you can use it, so there you go. These are projects that I'm watching being completed by some of you, and I want them. Okay, I ardently admire them, and I thought it would be a good way to... Um, connect you guys with maybe some floss tubers you haven't seen before or maybe just um, blather on about how your projects are wonderful. So um, the first shout out I have, here's my list, is uh, Cowgirl Kate, Celtic Ireland. Okay, if you're not familiar with Cowgirl Kate, I'm gonna link all the ladies below uh, so you can check them out. They're all ladies this month, but who knows, there might be some bros in there at some point. Um, Cowgirl Kate is like the conversion queen. She has taken the Celtic ladies, and she has a lot of them, she's working on a lot of different ones, but she's converted them into amazing things. Okay, so Celtic Ireland has a horse in it. She rode a horse into the pattern. You have got to see it. She also has some of them converted to Lord of the Rings characters, and Kate, you know which one I want you to get out from under the bed. I want you to work on Eowyn. Please. Um, but anyway, check her out. She She's amazing, and her videos are, are enjoyable, so she's below. The next project that I and lusting after is the Evergreen Needles Mermaid of Atlantis. Kelly's Mermaid is looking amazing. She's almost done with it and whoa. Wow! <laughs> I need that in my life. It, it's gorgeous. Check it out. Uh, the next one is a monkey. Now I feel about uh, the way I feel about monkeys dressed up in clothing is kind of the same way I feel about clowns and ventriloquist dolls. It's just semi-disturbing. <laughs> but this monkey is the cutest thing I've ever seen. If you have seen it, you already know what I'm talking about. It is Romantic Mademoiselle. Emily at Eclectic Possessions is working on her, and she's adorable. Hands down adorable. Like, I can't, <laughs> I never thought that a dressed up monkey would be something that I would willingly hang up on my wall, but this one would definitely go up, so I'm just saying that. I found the companion piece from Romantic Mademoiselle, and I sent it to Emily, but for some reason, she wasn't interested in it. Um, here's the photo. So I don't know why she doesn't want to do that one next. But there you go. The last project on my lust list is Ashley Morgan's Just Nan Baby Sampler. If you're looking for a hands-down, gorgeous, adorable baby sampler, look no further. This thing 
is really, really cute. Like, I practically would have more children to stitch this and hang it on my wall. It's that cute. So, those are my project shoutouts, my lust lists. Check out those projects. Let's move on. I'll start with finishes. I had four? Three. <laughs> I had three finishes this month, one of which happened just today. So, here you go. Uh, my first finish is this little Indiana pattern. Uh, Lindy Stitches is doing a handmade market in May, and I wanted to write a pattern that would be kind of like locally appealing, so I made this hoop. It's Indiana, and it just says home sweet home. You got to get the bow in there. Okay, so that was just a quick little finish, and I'm going to kit it up for my market, and it's going to be wonderful. Uh, I had two, pit, two other finishes, which I can't show you right now. Uh, I finished my Pride and Prejudice Blessing. I can't wait. I can't wait to show you. It's over there on the wall, mocking me daily that I don't have the proper time that I need to release it right now soon though and you guys will be the first to see it as soon as I can get the ball rolling. Um, the other one is a Father's Day pattern and I'm not going to show you the whole thing either because I'm a mean person and I'm still working out the kinks. So I finished it today. I'm in love with it. I'll just show you a little sneak peek. This is a Father's Day inspired pattern. It would be great for dad anytime. Inspired by my dad and all dads everywhere. It is also influenced by MC Hammer because My brain makes really weird connections, <laughs> so I'm excited, but here's just a little sneak peek There you go, <laughs> okay, let me show you my whips I'll start with Brooks Books. I got my two blocks done for March already. These were faster blocks. Um, I did, here's how the whole wrinkly thing is looking. And this month I did the frog and the squirrel. The frog was the fastest one I've gotten done so far. He was so fast, I think just because he's so skinny and there's just not a lot of stitching in his block, so it was fun to get that done really quickly. And then the squirrel is cute. But one of my daughters asked me, why is her acorn uh, red? And I don't understand it either, why her acorn is red, other than like if it was brown it might just like blend in with her. But Anyway, they're adorable. I, I'm just excited about this piece because I feel like I'm kind of seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm almost, yeah, I'm one away from being halfway done. So I feel like it's kind of in the bag that I can get this done before Christmas. We'll see. It's, it's super fun and I think it's going to look amazing all on one piece. I'm going to finish it as a wall hanging and put like really adorable Christmas fabric around it and excited about that. So uh, my next whip is going to market. Let me crinkle it out of its bag. It's going to look like this. And I'm sorry if I'm holding things weird. Um, my new camera set up in the window prevents me from being able to see what you see, like I can't see myself right now, so there is the picture and here is where I am. So I'm like halfway down the lady's body. This is going really fast, really quickly. The only thing that I don't like about this pattern is that it's on 14 count Ada, which doesn't bother me, but because it's a kit you can only use two strands, and I much prefer three strands on 14 count. In fact, in my kits, I put so much floss in them that 
so that people can stitch with three strands if they prefer that coverage, which I do. My Brooks Books piece is three strands. Um, I just don't think that two strands, like I can see the Ada on each stitch and that kind of bothers me, but there is blended, like holding all my projects. There is blended threads and so you can't really, and because they provide the floss, I can't like bump up the strand number, but it looks good enough. Um, yeah, I'm excited about that project. Um, if you like this kit, this is a vin like vintage -y 1999 Dimensions kit. Really cheap on eBay, and it's always on there, so there you go. My other two whips I'm much less excited about and are always on the verge of being UFOs. I'll just be honest. My next one is that I'm going to show you that I did work on a couple days is Dance at Bougieval. Um... I think I've just concluded that I'm not in the right life stage to be doing this. Um, I did, I was really, when Brittany came out with her UFO video, I was like, that's it, dance is going, like, I'm getting rid of it. And I even at some point was tempted to just cut my project off and use the fabric for something else that I wanted to start. <laughs> but I couldn't get myself to really commit to getting rid of it. It is beautiful, and, and I do want to do it, but that whole, like, the time commitment really bothers me. That you put, I put so much effort in for so little payoff. And I think it wouldn't bother me so much if I wasn't getting interrupted a lot, and, like, I can just imagine this being, like, a good retirement project. And I have joked about it being my nursing home project, and I... I think I might just bump that back a little to when I don't have any children in the home. <laughs> I don't know. So here's my goal. Now I got like this section done. Like this is a lady's hat right here. My goal is to get a little bit further down to where I hit the girl. Let me grab the pattern again. So I'm right here. I'm hoping to just get over to some solid colors. That's my only goal for this project, and that goal might last me the next two years, and I'm totally okay with that. But I think maybe if I get to some bigger blocks of color where I can get it done faster, it might be a little more rewarding, and it might make me want to work on it more. I don't know. I just... It just takes so long, and... I have to be in such a particular frame of mind to work on this that it's just discouraging. So at this point, I'm just putting it in the closet and I'm not consciously even thinking about it until that bug gets on heroin and I actually want to pull it back out and work on it. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to let the OCD kick in. Speaking of OCD, now I throw that term around loosely. I probably shouldn't because I know there's real people with OCD and that my little finicky problems do not actually qualify me to call myself OCD, but you get what I'm saying. When things are constantly nagging at your brain and you're like, it's a cross stitch project, let it go. Okay, so my next almost UFO piece is um, Plum Street Sampler's Spring Delivery. You remember I was having all sorts of color problems. The chart does not actually produce this image on the beginning of the pattern and it was driving me crazy. The colors were really dusty and boring and not spring-like at all. The only thing I've done on this is I stitched a really ugly flower. This one right here. I stupidly thought, like, since I didn't want to rip out the, the ugly flowers that were charted, if I just took the cleaner colors that I had chosen and the dusty colors that were charted in the pattern and, like, put them both in one flower, like, that would make the whole thing make sense. No. I just stitched a really ugly flower. <laughs> 
Uh, I was really close to just honestly tossing this project, like getting it out of my sight, throwing it in the garbage can. Okay, I wasn't that close, but that was the general idea, like I wanted to get it out of my presence. I think instead, it's not ugly enough to like toss. I think I'm just going to put this aside and I'll finish it as a gift for someone. It's not, it's not hideous. But I certainly do not want to see it <laughs> because it's caused me such frustration. Um, I'm just going to put it away and one day I will finish it as a gift for someone. And I'm sure no one is going to look at this and be like, what in the world? It's good enough for a gift, right? I mean... Okay, so that's spring delivery. Oh! I had a question! For all of you full coverage people, I forgot, on Dance at Bougival. Let me grab it again. I was wondering, um, you know, I have my, like, plasticky grid lines here. Um, once you get so far, can you start to take these out? <laughs> or do you have to leave all of them in until you're done? I honestly don't know. So, like, could I take these uh, vertical lines out until, like, here? Can you start clearing the grid lines off? Or is that just a bad idea? I don't know. Can you tell me? I I don't see why that would be a bad idea, but I can see myself starting to do that and then it turn into a disaster, so... What are your thoughts on that? Let me know down below. Okay, those are my uh, whips. I have an incredibly generous rack to share with you. Uh, my last video I was talking about loving the Julia Cairns going to market, the one I just showed you, um, and that she has other patterns of this mother with her son doing different things and that they're really awesome and precious. The UK uh, brand Maya has done a few of her pieces, but I couldn't ever find any of them. I was contacted by Nikki Granger, hi Nikki, uh, that she had a kit that she wanted to send to me. I'm trying not to get emotional, I'm sorry. Full house moment. Um, anyway, she sent me this kit. And I can't tell you how much I love this. Um, if I had had this one before I started going to market, I would have started this one first because I like it even more. It's just really, um, it's really beautiful and precious. And it makes me emotional just to look at it. Um, not only that she was so kind that she just sent it to me, but, um, I have emotional <laughs> reasons why I want to do these kits. My son is adopted from Ethiopia and I just I want to do them as sort of a little tribute to his birth mommy. I think about her a lot and um, anyway, <laughs> thank you Nikki so much. I am so, I'm gonna there's no questions about whether I'm gonna do this kit and that it's gonna be a precious project. So, everybody says it, and it's true. Uh, this community on Tube is just amazing. So, full house moment over. Thank you, Nikki. And <laughs> Whew. Okay, so here is my Tube PSA. It's kind of random, but hear me out. My family and I have been starting to learn American Sign Language and it's a huge undertaking and I hesitate even to say it on such a public forum because part of me is really afraid that I'll give up. Um, but that's not very courageous, is it? I'll just tell you, we're trying to learn sign language and it's a big deal. But in the process of that, uh, we've been thinking about and realizing for the first time what this hearing world is like for the deaf and the hard of hearing and the different challenges that they face. Um, so 
if someone is deaf or hard of hearing, they're going to have a hard time watching your floss tube videos or they might not even watch them because they need closed captions. Now, YouTube has an automatic closed caption function, so you can turn on um, the closed captions for any video and YouTube will, tr will f think it's figuring out what the person is saying. It's notoriously bad and turns out a lot of garbledygook. Like, you know this from talking, in, do you ever talk into your, I talk into my phone a lot. Do you ever talk into your phone and the f Google hears you or Siri hears you completely wrong? It's like, what in the world? YouTube is like that, like, on a consistent basis. So, <laughs> all you have to do to solve this problem and allow people that are deaf or hard of hearing to enjoy your videos is to caption them yourself. It's really easy. All you have to do is uh, YouTube it, and there's plenty of YouTubes that show you how to do this. The only thing it takes is time. It is time, kind of time consuming, and I'll be the first to admit, I have already known that you needed to do this for a while now, and just, I've had my excuses, but I realize that I think it's important um, to include people that need the closed captions. So, if you've watched this video in closed captions, let me know how you think I did. <laughs> okay, so anyway, floss tubers, think about that. It's just something to put in the brain pocket, and maybe you should take some action on that. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you to all of you who signed up for my newsletter for the free Easter patterns. If you're interested in those Easter patterns, send me a private message. I can send you the newsletter. It's no big deal. Um, anyway, all my social media links are down below, including the link to my shop, Lindy Stitches, and the link to my Instagram. Love that Instagram. I'll catch you later. Bye, guys.